Hello and glad to have your company on PNG Extra. Today we check one spot where school students are making quality time during these third term school holidays. And for you who love wearing caps or hats, stay on to find out how this trend began. And on afternoon tea, we'll be joined by Dr. Arno Weine. All public schools in the country are in their third term break for a week. In the city of Port Moresby, school holiday programs are being organized for students as extracurricular activities, learning in a different environment other than the classroom. The National Museum and Arts Gallery is one such institution with this kind of program. Constance Correa was out and about today at the National Museum and caught up with some students. Three school holiday and while some students are at home taking time away from the books and virus and the hectic classroom learning some took time out at the National Museum and Art Gallery for the school holiday program to discover more about the history of the war in PNG and also learn about the different cultures the artifacts and languages of the different provinces and regions in the country well, I got to learn pretty much some new stuff about my culture like the pops and mops and yeah, we um we learned some new things today and yesterday it was pretty fun. One thing I've learned is about the uh, PNG history about World War One and World War Two. So that's what I really enjoyed about the holiday program. It's kinda of good because um, a lot of the students which we attended this program we learned things that we don't know, we see, we see artifacts that we didn't know about. What was one thing you learned um, about the program here at the museum for the school holidays? Here? Well, what I learned is that uh, from uh, my, from what I see, I like I came and I saw a lot of like new artifacts and like by looking at it, like there's a there's like to know my own like whatever my culture is and what I see like new like to get to know new things about my culture. Um, this is my first time to come to the museum. I actually go to the National Library only. Um, it's cool. I learn about many things, the past and the present. And we learned about archaeologists and World War, how it started and how it ended. It's a great pleasure to be here because uh, we, we learn new things about the history that we uh, never learned in the school. One thing I am interested in is the World War One, because this kind of stuff we never learn them in the in our classrooms in our school, because it's kind of not our teacher is not interested in this kind of stuff. The theme of the program is celebrating cultural landscapes. Away from the usual classroom teaching and learning, the students were very attentive to the speakers of the program, who told them much about the landscape of our country and the languages, and how the languages vary with the landscape of PNG. Uh, we focus on, on the landscape of Port Mosby and how it has changed over time. That was what we were talking about in the International Museum Day. So the, kid, the children, the school kids, the school children will this week go through and choose a topic or visit a, a venue or place, and they will write or do something about it and come back and present, they present it here. So that, that was the idea. This kind of educational program, program are important. We see that as contributing to their development and, uh, and something they are related to and associated with their every day of their lives in here in Port Mosby. Um, Port Mosby itself is a colonial city that's developed out in the model capital city of Port Mosby. There are a lot of histories added to it. They see place names, they see street names, they are associated with people who have been here. So learning about the history of the place, learning about how Motuans and the Quaidas relate to the cultural and you know, natural environment of Port Mosby, and seeing and uh, knowing about the changes that has happened and taken place, and how development can change and transform a landscape, a cultural landscape, a natural lands environment and make it become so different to what it is. So people have a, have a need to understand where they have lived, the lands, landscape, landscape land environment or the lands, landscape that surrounds them. It was very interesting to come and learn about all the things that we haven't learned before and the, all the artifacts in the gallery and all those stuff. <laughs> I learned a lot of things about the coastal people and 
Uh, also other things about different provinces where my friends are from. Yeah. So where are you from? I'm from Central Pacific, um, Manus and Mar Yeah. What was one very interesting thing you found out that you never knew, you know, before? Well, I, I would say the World War, World War Two. The Germans were the ones who created the World War, started the World War. I didn't like know that, and it was very interesting to know, to get to know that the Germany was the country that started the World War Two. Okay, so what? How did they? Um, how did the World War start with the Germany? The Japanese wanted uh, some things that we had in our country. So they tried to come. They tried to come and get it, and well, some conflicts happened between them and um, the German who owned Papua and this. Well, it was Papua and New Guinea before. So well, the conflicts happened when Japanese came to get some resources in our country. So that's how it happened. Conflict between uh, Japanese and German. That's why. Uh, that's when the war started. The school holiday program continued today and will include an excursion to the Bomana War Cemetery to find out more about the history of the war. It's great to see school students having fun and learning new things during this school term break. Watch out tomorrow for Constance Korowa, who may be where you are. I guess it could be Nature Park or the Adventure Park. Ever wondered why people wear caps or hats or who invented them? Kashmir Waken brings us some insights on the story of caps and hats. So look, yeah. we come, we come, we come again right. now. Five, six, stop, right and since. Ever wondered why people wear hats and caps? There are literally thousands of hats and caps around the world. There are different styles each fitting the type of natural habitat that people live in. Basically, a cap or a hat is a shaped covering for the head, worn for warmth as a fashion item or a part of a uniform. Caps and hats are different and many people get confused with the two. The Oxford Dictionary describes the hat as a covering for the head. It is worn for various reasons, including protection against the elements, ceremonial reasons, religious reasons, safety, or as a fashion accessory. While the cap, on the other hand, is described as a kind of hat that has a visor and does not have a brim. It is used for blocking sunlight. The type of hats include beaver hat, bubble hat, bunny hat, cowboy hat, flat hat, sailor hat, and straw hat. And the different types of caps include baseball cap, flat cap, combination cap, cricket cap, and Juliet cap. There are no official records of the origins of the first hat. However, archaeologists found the remains of a frozen man in a mountain between Australia and Italy, whom they believed to be 3300 BC old. One of the first pictorial depictions of a hat appears in a tomb painting from Thebes, Egypt, which shows a man wearing a conical straw hat dated to around 3200 BC. In the past, hats were an indicator of social status. In the military, hats may denote nationality, brands of service, rank, and a regiment. Police typically wear distinctive hats also, such as peak caps or brim hats, such as those worn by the Royal Canadian Mounted Police. Some hats have protective functions. As example, the hard hat protects construction workers' heads from injury by falling objects and a British police custodian helmet protects the officer's head. A sun hat shades the face and shoulders from the sun. A cowboy hat protects against sun and rain. And a Asanka fair hat with fold-down ear flaps keeps the head and ears warm. Some hats are worn for ceremonial purposes, 
such as the motto board, which is worn or carried during university graduation ceremonies. Some hats are worn by members of a certain profession, such as the tokyu worn by chefs. Some hats have religious functions, such as the mitres worn by bishops and the turban worn by Sikhs, such as mitres worn by bishops. A hat and a cap is not only just a fashion accessory, it is used to cover up your head so you wouldn't be hot during the summer or cold in the winter. The disadvantage of wearing a hat or a cap too often, it may damage the hair, such as wearing a tight cap or a hat which put a lot of pressure on the hair and block proper circulation. In the winter, hat is one of the most important protections from the cold. Since we lose a lot of heat through our head, a head will prevent that and keep us warm. This is a perfect way to avoid any kind of cold or flu. During the summer, heads protect your head, hair, eyes, neck and face from harmful sun rays. That means your skin will not become dry, so there is less chance of wrinkles. Heads and caps can be desirable, seductive, protective, cute and cool. Now that's quite interesting. I have a favorite hat I love to wear when out in the sun. Coming up, afternoon tea with Dr. Arnold Weine.